Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video we are going to be introducing three new Mori eels for the 1000 gallon Mori eel tank. So if you have watched the previous video on this channel, uh, you know that I have a big tessalata, a giant Mori and a viper Mori. And in this video we are going to be adding three of the most popular eels to that bunch and hopefully everything will go well. All right, here we are in front of the 1000 gallon Mori eel aquarium. And here we have the three new eels. And before I wanna get into the details of what these eels are, I just wanna um, cover the current tank mates uh, for a minute. And uh, if you have watched a previous video, um, you may remember that I have added uh, a bunch of angelfish, uh, butterfly fish, uh, tanks, etc. But unfortunately, I found out that these fish are not very compatible with Mori eels. And that is because a lot of these fish, they like to be you know, deep in the rock as well where the Mori eels are. And uh, that kind of caused a little bit of stress to the eels. They're used to having you know, the, the rock work all to themselves and they weren't used to really having a bunch of other fish in there with them. And the problem with these angelfish especially is that they are very uh, territorial as well. So they constantly, you know, try to intimidate the eels. Um, the eels weren't really eating that much anymore. And uh, so unfortunately, uh, basically every tank mate from that video is no longer in this tank. Uh, I do have the sailfin tank in here and a fox face rabbit fish, uh, mainly for algae control, hopefully. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm back to my current or my usual tank mates, which are the monofish and the cleaner wrasses. And uh, yeah, with these three new eels, um, I'm going to have you know, new tank mates for the existing eels. And obviously these new eels will also be living in the rock, but uh, it's the same species of fish. So I don't expect them to be you know, huge problems. Um, the new eels are smaller and I purposely picked them uh, as a smaller size so they can all grow up together. And uh, these, uh, the Tesla, for example, he's three and a half feet. The giant Mori is also three and a half feet and the Viper around three feet. And once they reach three feet, they kind of slow down when they, uh, in their growth rate. So um, these eels are all, you know, I think between a foot and two feet. So they will grow faster and uh, they will probably reach this size, you know, in about a year. And then they will slow down the growth as well. And in a year from now, this guy hasn't, is not going to be like huge. You know, he's only going to be have grown for like maybe two or three inches. So all eels will be similar in size. Uh, this will be very helpful, you know, for eels getting along with one another. And uh, yeah, another thing I wanted to mention is I probably going to uh, remove all my invertebrates. So all the cleaner shrimp as well as the spiny lobsters. And that is because two of these new eels get huge. One gets to around five feet, the other one five to eight feet. And the third one around three feet. So I'm going to have, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, biolord in this aquarium. And in order to, you know, keep the cost down with, the, with salt for water changes, I decided to lower this salinity from 1.025, which I had before with the inverts, to 1.018. So I can either, uh, you know, save uh, on salt, basically do the same 25% of water change every other week, or I can do 25% uh, every week. So, and I'm probably gonna do that. So I'm gonna keep spending the same amount of money, but I will do a weekly water change instead of every other week. All right, so let's going to, let's start unboxing these eels. I don't know which eel is in which box. So this is going to be exciting. And then we will take a closer look and uh, then we'll start the acclimation process and then uh, put them into the tank. And then uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow morning, everyone's gonna be fine. Okay, the unboxing quote unquote is finished. And here we have the first eel, and this is the green moray. So Gymnothorax funibris. Uh, this is an eel that I always wanted. Um, gets really large, gets very thick. So I wanted to get a small one because then I have a higher chance for success with the other ones. Um, because the other ones, they're not really aggressive towards anything really, never eaten the fish, you know, never got into a fight with each other, like no serious fight at least. So um, yeah, I think 
uh, this is a better choice, you know, and then getting like a three to five foot green moray and then possibly having, you know, big problems right away. So this is basically the first eel. And then here we have a Japanese dragon moray. And this is the, going to be the smallest eel. So he will grow to three feet, but he will be very thick. And uh, I think it's going to work out. I'm a little bit worried about the viper moray because they are basically very similar, uh, you know, in their mouth and their teeth and etc. cetera. So um, I have to watch out for that, but uh, yeah, I hope everything's gonna work out. Take a look at this beautiful big tessellata. He doesn't know he's gonna have new tank mates pretty soon. And then the third eel, is a zebra moray. So they get to around five feet, you know, very peaceful eels. They only eat, you know, shrimp, uh, hopefully, you know, dead shrimp. My cleaner shrimp should be fine. But like I said earlier, I'm going to uh, get them out of this tank because I want to lower the salinity. Um, and inverts cannot, you know, handle low salinity. So uh, yeah, I'm going to acclimate them and then I'm going to be putting them into a 32 gallon aquarium uh, for like a brief minute so I can show you a better, you know, look at them before I move them over to the 1000 gallon tank. Okay, so I just put the green moray into the 32 gallon fluval flex and I only did that so I can show you guys some close ups. Um, so this is a little bit stressful for the animals because I, I'm going to, I'm putting them into this tank briefly and then into the actual tank, which is the 1000 gallon tank. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, I won't be able to really show you some close ups uh, because I think they're going to hide all three eels are going to hide, you know, for a while. So this is kind of the only way I can show you some close ups, you know, before they're going to go into hiding for like a week. So yeah, Gymnothorax funebris very popular eel, um, home to Florida. Uh, this one actually came from Brazil. And like I said earlier, this is one of the largest eels. He will grow to between five and eight feet. And they actually also grow very fast. So the tessellata, he only grows, you know, a couple of inches every year, at least mine. And he doesn't eat, you know, every day. He only eats like every couple of days. But uh, I heard that the green morris, they eat, you know, every day pretty much. So, and this is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be feeding him every day because I want him to get used to, you know, accepting food from me, just like all the other eels and uh, only eat food that I have soaked in garlic so that he, you know, as soon as he smells garlic in the water, he knows it's time to eat. So that way he's not gonna eat, you know, the mono fish or anything else I have in the tank. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to put him into the 1000 gallon tank now, and then uh, hopefully everything go, will go well. Here we go, green moray going into the 1,000 gallon moray mountain. Oh, can't believe this is actually happening. Wow, beautiful fish. <laughs> yeah, now you can see his colors a lot better uh, under this type of lighting and uh, yeah I assume he's around 22 inches so pretty good size but uh, they're going to grow really fast so he's going to be about three feet maybe in a couple of months already and then uh, his growth rate should slow down uh, according to what I've been told by other people but uh, yeah let's go to the next seal and I uh, hope that one will look pretty cool as well. Okay, here is the Japanese dragon moray. So his jaw is similar to that of the viper moray. And uh, this eel, like I said earlier, will only quote unquote grow to three feet, uh, but he will be also very thick. So I hope it's gonna work well with the other eels. Um, I was told that the only issue I may be facing is with the viper moray, but this is something we have to, you know, see. But uh, yeah, this eel uh, it comes in uh, three different variations. So you have this Japanese dragon moray, you have the ones from Hawaii, which are a little bit more colorful. And then you also have the uh, Mexican, I believe. And uh, for some reason, I really like the Japanese ones. And that's kind of because I did come across, you know, a <laughs> cooking video from Japan where somebody, you know, had a, bought a full grown one, you know, from a seafood market, had him in a tank, uh, you know, briefly. Uh, to show the audience before he was, you know, consumed. 
So ever since I've seen that video, I was like, man, if I had an ear like that, that would be amazing. So uh, this is basically why I bought him. And uh, otherwise I would really stick only to, you know, eels that are five feet or larger. But I think this Dragon Moray, uh, once he gets acclimated, he's gonna look really nice. He, right now he's stressed out, of course. And that's why his colors are really, you know, pale, but um, he will cut up in no time and hopefully start eating soon. And then we'll, we're going to have a really nice looking eel. All right, Japanese Dragon Moray going into the 1,000 gallon Moray Mountain. <sighs> wow, he looks amazing. Yeah, I can't wait for this guy to grow three feet. So three feet is about from this end to like here, since this is four feet front to back. So yeah, and like I said, he's gonna get really thick, so that will really help him, you know, stand his ground against an eel such as, you know, the Tessalata and the giant Mori who likes to get a massage next to the power <laughs> uh, water outlet. But uh, like I said, none of my eels have ever eaten a tank mate, you know, even when they had the angels and the tanks and some of them were really small. And I still have some, I still have a seal and tank and a fox face rabbit in here and they're doing fine. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the last eel, which is the zebra moray. Okay, here is a closer look of the zebra moray, you know, stressed out, but uh, he's only going to be in here for a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, so this eel is not a fish eater. This is a so-called pebble tooth emore. So they only eat uh, crustaceans. And uh, I still have my big spiny lobster in my uh, 1000 gallon tank. So I'm still trying to catch him and put him into my 270 gallon tank so I can lower the salinity safely. And uh, the cleaner shrimp that I still have there, they're not gonna be uh, you know, uh, at risk but eventually I will catch those as well and put them in the 270 gallon tank. Um, but yeah, I think this eel is gonna look amazing. He is one of those that grows large, so five feet. I've seen them, you know, in display tanks, a very impressive size. So uh, he's very stressed out. So I'm gonna put him into the 1000 gallon tank and then turn off the lights and then uh, hopefully they will acclimate, uh, you know, nicely. Zebra Mori going in, he actually put up quite a fight so I did not expect that so this is the last eel to be put into the Moray mountain and he's pretty much gone <laughs> okay so that pretty much concludes this video so I'm not sure if I'm going to add another clip to this uh, so I will basically turn off the lights now uh, here we see the green Mori um, he was a little bit freaked out earlier you know jumped tried to jump out of the tank actually but uh, I fortunately have good lids and uh, yeah so like I said we'll turn off the lights and hopefully tomorrow morning everyone will be settled in um, Tessalata Moray and the giant Moray don't seem to know what's going on. I mean, they did see the new fish, but uh, you know, they didn't react in any way. So yeah, uh, like I said, not sure if there will be another clip. If not, I will see you next time.